for IRS Schedule A, itemized deductions. So for taxpayers who are individuals filing their annual tax return, uh, the IRS gives you a choice between electing the standard deduction uh, to reduce your taxable income or reporting itemized deductions uh, in order to reduce your uh, overall taxable income. So uh, most taxpayers will choose the larger of the two, although there may be times when people decide to itemize the tax deductions even if the federal tax uh, bill will be lower using the standard deduction uh, specifically because of state tax incentives or programs that might make it a better overall tax situation uh, for them to itemize. So we're going to go through how to complete this form. Uh, you'll see different categories of expenses that taxpayers can itemize. We're not going to go too deep into any one of these uh, situations. Uh, there will be links in the show notes to other videos where we go into much more depth. For example, when it comes to medical and dental expenses, we'll briefly discuss the rules, but then uh, there will be a separate video that goes into much more depth uh, following the, all, all of the nuances of the IRS form instructions uh, so that you can get a better uh, specifically focused uh, tutorial on each topic. So again, this is a one-page schedule. Uh, there are situations, uh, in, as I alluded to, where you might elect to itemize deductions even if there's less than the standard deduction for the year, you would check this box all the way at the bottom. So we'll start at the top of the form. We'll, we'll use our hero, John Doe. He's elected to itemize his deductions, and we're going to go through Schedule A. Most taxpayers are not going to have uh, expenses that require them to fill in every single block, but you know, this was a lucky year for John Doe. So he had lots of hospitalizations. He paid tons in taxes. He had a variety of different uh, home mortgages that he was paying interest on, contributed to charity, casualty and theft losses, you name it, and he reported it for this tax year. So we're going to briefly go over these, and then again, in the show notes, uh, we'll have links to separate videos on each category of, of expenses. So let's start at the top with medical and dental ex expenses. So note that if you've been reimbursed by insurance or through, a, you know, like an employer plan, uh, you would not report these expenses. Uh, uh, you would also not report expenses that you paid through, uh, uh, you know, pre-tax uh, pre uh plans. For example, uh, some, some employers offer the opportunity to use pre-tax money to uh, pay health insurance prem premiums. Even though health insurance premiums are eligible for uh, itemized deductions, you would not be allowed to deduct pre-tax medical uh, spending. So we'll cover that in a separate video. In this case, John Doe incurred $22,500 of qualified medical and dental expenses uh, during the tax year. In line two, we're going to report the number that appears on line 11 of your form 1040 or 1040 SR. This is uh, known as adjusted gross income or AGI. So one of the rules about medical and dental expenses is that you must have enough of those expenses to exceed 7.5% of your adjusted gross income for the year. And then you can itemize anything above and beyond that. So most taxpayers that don't spend that much money on medical and dental expenses will probably not have to itemize them. In this case, John Doe, his AGI was exactly $100,000. So we multiply that amount by 7.5% to arrive at $7,500. Uh, 
This is his AGI floor, which means he cannot deduct the first $7,500 of medical and dental expenses, but he can deduct everything on top of that. So in line four, we'll subtract the AGI floor from his medical and dental expenses to arrive at $15,000. That is eligible as an itemized deduction. So in the next category, we'll go over taxes that you paid during the year. So there are very specific taxes. The vast majority of them are state and local taxes. We'll cover those in a little bit more depth, and then we'll cover uh, them in a lot more depth in a separate video. So uh, <clears throat> all of this is under line five. You'll see that there are uh, separate parts of line five to cover income and general sales tax, real estate tax, personal property tax, and then finally, uh, a section where we uh, calculate whether or not the total ta taxes you paid uh, re reach the uh, maximum threshold of $10,000. Uh, so that is the most in state and local taxes that any taxpayer may, uh, may uh, claim as an itemized deduction in the tax year. Uh, $5,000 for married the taxpayers filing a separate return. So let's go to 5A real quick. Uh, state and local income tax or general sales tax. So the Internal Revenue Code allows taxpayers to itemize either category of taxes, but not both. So uh, the default on Schedule A is to use state in, and local income tax as the deduction. However, uh, John Doe, uh, for those of you who might be familiar with his history, hails from Texas. Texas does not have an, a state income tax, so the natural default would be to use general sales taxes. And again, we'll get into uh, more specifics in a separate video on how the IRS will allow you to uh, calculate your sales tax deduction. There are a couple of ways to do that. But for this example, Let's just assume that John Doe had $5,000 of state sales taxes that he paid during the tax year. We'll enter that into line 5A. In 5B, we're going to enter state and local real estate taxes. Uh, again, there are specific requirements that we'll discuss separately, but state and local real estate taxes uh, are calculated separately. Uh, you can include them uh, regardless of whether or not you're claiming a deduction for income tax or sales tax. And then the same thing with personal property tax. We'll just say that John Doe incurred $1,000 of real estate tax and $1,000 of personal property tax during the year that he could claim a deduction on. We'll add those up and we reach $7,000. So the lesser of either $7,000 or $10,000 which happens to be the $7,000, is what goes into line 5E. Now, fortunately for John, he did not pay any other taxes. If he had, he would have to line the, uh, outline them uh, in line 6 in, these, in this dotted line field, and then he would add that to uh, the number that he reached in 5E. Again, there are uh, very specific other taxes that the IRS allows you to list on this, and we'll cover that in a separate video. So we've covered medical and dental expenses. We've covered taxes paid. Now we're on to interest paid. Uh, generally speaking, uh, when we're talking about itemized deductions for interest, we're talking about home mortgage interest, and we're talking about investment interest. So the, the big part of this would be the home mortgage interest. Uh, the, there are uh, new rules that have taken place in, well, not exactly new, but about six years ago, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act uh, uh, put uh, more strict guidance on how homeowners can deduct home mortgage interest. So we'll cover this in depth in another video, but if you, for example, if you took a home equity loan to make improvements to your house, you could claim that as interest. Uh, it, because you used your home mortgage to buy, build, or improve your home. 
Uh, but if you took out a loan, let's say you refinanced your home and you took out cash and you decided to pay down credit card debt, that would not be uh, interest that you could deduct. Under previous tax rules, you used to be able to deduct it uh, after the Tax Cuts and uh, Jobs Act of 2017. That is no longer applicable. Also, there is a new limitation on the amount of a loan that you can deduct interest for. So uh, homeowners that closed on a loan after 2017 are only able to claim a home mortgage interest deduction on the first $750,000 of their mortgage. So in line 8A, we'll, uh, we'll enter the home mortgage interest and any points that were reported by the lender on your Form 1098. In line 8B, this is home mortgage interest that was not reported to you on Form 1098, and 8C would be points that were not reported to you. Uh, most of the time, this doesn't occur to taxpayers unless they uh, maybe purchased a house with seller financing, in which case the seller uh, sells you the house, but then also carries a note that uh, that is a, a response. Basically, they're kind of acting as the bank. So they're carrying a note, and you're paying that note off on, over time. And that person probably doesn't have the resources to create a Form 1098. So you can uh, report that mortgage interest. You would have to follow certain instructions and we'll cover that in a separate video. So line 8D we do not use, so we're going to total all of the home mortgage interest either reported on 1098 or not, and we arrive at $4,000. In line 9, uh, we'll include investment interest, which if applicable, you, you would probably file IRS Form 4952, uh, which reports out on your interest or your investment interest calculations. This would be interest that accrues on uh, money that you borrowed for investment purposes. So we'll add line 8E to line 9 and we arrive at $5,000. This is the tax deduction for interest that you paid over the course of the year. Gifts to charity. If you made, uh, so we'll start with line 11 gifts by ch cash or check, uh, go into line 11, and then donated items or gifts that are other than by cash or check would go into line 12. There are special rules that apply depending on the size of the gift. If you made a gift of $250 or more, then you're required to obtain a written acknowledgement from the qualified charity. Uh, this doesn't count uh, in certain circumstances. For example, if you're a regular churchgoer and you tithe $50 a week for an entire year, your gift on an annual basis is more than $250. However, uh, you never reach the $250 limit in any single week, so you, you would not be required to obtain a written acknowledgement from your church. Uh, but if you decided to give the church $1,000, then they, they would need to give you uh, a written acknowledgement uh, of your uh, donation. So uh, there are other requirements. We'll go into them a little bit more uh, in depth in a separate video. In line 13, uh, this is a placeholder for any charitable contribution carryover from a prior year. So there are certain limitations uh, based on your adjusted gross income of how much you can deduct as a charitable contribution. And anything that is not allowed in the current tax year can be carried over uh, for up to five tax years into the future. So in this case, John Doe has $1,000 that he uh, you know, had to carry over from last year. We'll add that to this year's donations and arrive at $4,000. In line 15, uh, there are some requirements about casualty and theft losses. Uh, specifically, they must be from a federally declared disaster. 
Now, uh, if it's if it if you've completed IRS form 4684, you would enter the amount from line 18 of that form. And again, this has to be a named disaster or uh, another event that qualifies uh, based on the uh, IRS rules uh, for IRS form 4684. So all of the forms that are mentioned in this, I'll introduce links to those uh, videos uh, in, the, in the show notes. So John Doe uh, had $1,000 of uh, losses on IRS form uh, I didn't get that. 4684. So he entered the line 18 amount uh, there. Uh, we go to line 16, which is other itemized deductions as allowed by the IRS. Uh, the IRS uh, Schedule A instructions contain a long list of uh, itemized deductions that are lesser known to most taxpayers. Uh, one of them would be net qualified disaster loss, which is also reported on IRS Form 4684, just in a separate section. So we, uh, if there is a uh, another itemized deduction, you would write out in these dotted line uh, field uh, the the what type of deduction it is, and then the dollar amount. So in this case, it was a net qualified disaster loss reported on Form 4684 for $1,000. And then we'll add these total. So in line 17, we're going to combine line 4, line 7, line 10, line 14, line 15, line 16. And I believe we arrive at $33,000. Let me just double check the math to make sure uh, that is correct. Now, let's imagine that John's total itemized deductions are $1,000. Uh, this would be much less than a standard deduction, regardless of the year that you're claiming uh, uh, deductions on your tax return. But for some you know, state tax reasons or to qualify for a benefits program, he decides to elect deductions, even if they add up to less than the standard deduction, you would click that box on line 18. So once you have all of this information, Schedule A is not very difficult to fill out. However, each of these sections can have a lot of complexity. So we're going to create uh, separate videos for each of these categories where, where we go uh, really deep into that specific category of deduction. So that's all we have for this video. If you like our, uh, if you want to know more about Schedule A, you can check out the article that we created. Uh, simply go to our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in IRS Schedule A in the search bar and you should see our comprehensive article. Uh, uh, in that article we actually go into each of these sections in great detail so you should get a lot out of that article. If you like our articles please subscribe to our newsletter and if you like our YouTube videos please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have any questions or comments please uh, post them in the comments section. Thank you very much and have a great day.